Good morning and welcome to our monthly webcast. I am your moderator, Samir Mehta. This is session number 63. First of all, a warm welcome to all the interventional cardiologists uh, from different countries that are attending the TCT conference. Uh, another uh, exceptional uh, TCT meeting uh, with the numerous uh, superb uh, clinical trials. Uh, some of those uh, Dr. Sharma would be discussing uh, this morning. Uh, uh, we have a very interesting uh, and a challenging uh, CTO case this morning which Dr. Kinney and Dr. Sharma would uh, take you through and uh, hopefully provide you exceptional teaching tips how to handle these cases. Uh, good morning, uh, Samin. Uh, uh, not only do you have uh, some trials about uh, TCT, I, there is a phenomenal uh, announcement you are going to make this morning which is going to take the program to an entirely new level. Yes, um, uh, good morning to all our viewers and uh, 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 good morning from um, Mount Sinai Cat Lab. Yeah, clearly we started our uh, coronary interventional live cases uh, five plus years ago. Then about two years ago we added the endovascular and now there is a big demand of the structural heart disease cases. So we have created a structure heart live uh, dot org uh, website and key is that start doing structural heart disease cases also particularly tower so much interest and of course could be other cases and the first one inaugural case will be on uh, October uh, uh, the 14th there will be on second Tuesday of the month or every other month from 9 to 10. So instead of 8 to 9 will be 9 to 10, slight different, but the idea is the same concept that select a good case for teaching point of view, uh, give some didactic discussion and then perform the case and give various technical tips to all our viewers. So I am very excited that uh, we have been waiting for a long time and now this is structural heart disease case will start uh, shortly. One hour uh, good enough for that? Well, I mean we will time that way. The key is that uh, most of the work will be done beforehand. So the once after the sheath has been inserted, I think everything else could be done one hour as you saw. Uh, in our June symposium, actually we did a four uh, tower cases on that day uh, and uh, the actual time taken after your sheath is there uh, probably takes about uh, 20, uh, maybe 20-30 minutes maximum. Excellent. And of course, as you mentioned with the TCT, a lot of good trials were presented and are being, right, today is the concluding, sorry, tomorrow morning will be conclusion of the TCT and we will be waiting for some more trials today. Couple of them I have incorporated in my didactic discussion this morning. Excellent, Samin. Uh, uh, anu, you are taking us through also with the images of the case to be done this morning? Yep. So, we will uh, get to this. Uh, these are our, uh, uh, we can get to the slides. Uh, the, uh, our supporters, the disclosure, same it's a, uh, this patient is a 42 year old, probably the youngest we are doing here in our uh, live case series, uh, who presented earlier this month with a new onset of class 2 angina uh, with the inferior infralateral ischemia. Cath revealed two vessel disease with the circumflex branches and CTO of the distal RCA. So at that time patient had a stent in the both OM2 and LPL with a Promus Premier did well on medical therapy and discharge still has symptoms and this is what uh, Anu going to show. Let me show it. Yeah, so if you see on uh, the left side, the stents we did a uh, few weeks back, patent and this is where we are with the LV. So, if you so additional challenge to the CTO with the osteal lesion? I think it's just a spasm. We okay. didn't have it uh, with the diagnostic picture uh, right. when we did it uh, early part of this month. So I think it's just a spasm by the catheter. And but the catheter, this is a side hole catheter, no? Side hole catheter. Yeah, we gave, we gave more nitro, varapamil, took uh, one more picture, but we still yeah, but see it. But the injection is the same. Right. You but do the your, nitro, uh, nitro probably disappeared through yeah, the side contra holes. Contralateral injection first, where you wait still, you start seeing the collateral and then you do your anti-grade injection. That will give you an idea how long your uh, CTO could be. Uh, looks anywhere between 15 to 20 millimeters uh, once you do the dual injection. Now, it seems to be fairly uh, a simpler integrate injection, but question is if we integrate does not succeed, um, uh, how would you proceed uh, no, in terms of retrograde? Um, uh, if we go to the pictures here, 
we can go another i mean we didn't see any good septals because as clearly the for the retrograde uh, the septal to septal collaterals are the best collaterals and uh, that is what you are expecting and uh, the ap cranial will be the good view to uh, Although it's going to be never uh, easy and definite uh, to predict uh, whether you are able to to cross anti-grade, but this this looks a fairly good anti-grade case. Yes, it definitely. I mean, and clearly that those who are big believers of the retrograde, I say that uh, there is nothing uh, magic about retrograde. You should know it. So in cases where unsuccessful, able to do it, but uh, retrograde. I'll show you just little data and then some more coming in the literature that retrograde uh, recanalization actually require higher stent use, little higher complication compared to anti-grade and may not have recovery of the ventricular function the way it usually happens. So there are a lot of issues with the retrograde. So it should be the same strategy of the CTO, our approach, anti-grade, anti-grade fails then retrograde. Rare indication would be that your osteal lesion where you don't have a stump, you can't engage the guide catheter, osteal RCA, osteal uh, circumflex or uh, LED and uh, clearly that you don't know which way to go that case maybe you can start as the retrograde as a as a primary technique but otherwise should be after your failed one or two integrate attempts so this is the case uh, it makes it appropriate is uh, uncertain but the young person we felt that we give him benefit he has ischemia clearly he has a LV dysfunction in that territory uh, and he's on maximum medical therapy so by criteria he is, still becomes uh, uncertain but I think this is case which uh, should be done particularly because of the young age and I'll show you some data that on long term uh, the survival and I'm going to show all the new data nothing old which we have uh, shown here uh, in terms of these two important points one is the BVS versus metal DES trials because a lot of hype and uh, excitement in last uh, two days at TCT and uh, actually for that matter in last six months because of some uh, questionable publication, uh, controversial publication and update in the CTO recanalization. So uh, if uh, first is that the stent to scaffold, question is stents are so good, why do you need anything else? And that's the whole issue of this bioresorable vascular scaffold because the, as you saw uh, various data of the Zions uh, with the lower stent thrombosis compared to bare metal by any other stent, uh, second generation, first generation, uh, other combination that have a statistically lower stent thrombosis up to uh, two years and so. So why do we need any? The key is that we event a continue to occur no matter what DES it is, DES, BMS for that matter, that events continue to occur in these cases even after no restenosis uh, at time six months to 12 months. So the two to three percent event occurs every year and largely that is related to your uh, some restenotic process delayed and sec then the late it comes the neo, in, uh, neo, in, neo intima and endothelization and the plaque rupture just happens in the nat native vessel. So therefore there is a concept that once you leave the metal behind that will continue to give trouble on a long run and therefore the whole concept of the bioresorbable stents is the reduction in adverse event such as stent scaffold thrombosis recoil uh, and removal of a rigid cage from the treated coronary vessel reduction in bleeding complication and improvement in future treatment options but more important that once you remove the cage this metal the vessel will behave, have a normal vasomotor motion. So after a few years, while the, the metal stent encase the vessel, cannot dilate or constrict, but uh, once the stent is resorbed and its work is done, so now vessel will behave normally, your person doing exercise will dilate three or four times what normal vessels do and that actually has been shown and this is one of the very important aspect of uh, the stent, uh, bioabsorbable stent uh, and or uh, scaffold the, the term we use. Also that this delayed event, we expect that delayed event will uh, disappear, there's a lot of companies are involved in making this bioresorbable stents, the one which has come to fruition and in the trial has been the absorbed. Uh, which is the whole concept and started many first the registry then the randomized trial but the concept remains the same that you create uh, you take care of the acute and you will take uh, and the foreign material disappears after a few years and this is the whole concept of the bio uh, bioresorbable uh, scaffold 
and this actually goes on the technology of our zines. That is, the drug is same everlumus and multi-link design of the stent, but it is made of poly, uh, polyactide polylactide that which is a PLLA that gradually disappears and undergo disintegration it starts about 12 months and probably completes around 4 to 5 years although by major disintegration has been shown to occur within uh, 3 years and so and this is the whole concept that you need this uh, radial strength in the vessel for first six months, one year, you don't need it after, so therefore that's okay that you lose the uh, the stent mass after that time, and uh, but has done the job what you need for restoration of the vas vascular integrity acutely, and then on, on long term uh, disappears. Now also what we found now they're calling that the growth which occurs on these stent struts because there are no struts left. So it uh, resembles like your media. So the, rather than calling it the neo intima, the terminology now coming as the neo media. Because when the stents are resolving, uh, resorbs and they absorb without causing inflammation, the, the tissue growth me, the mimics your neo media rather than neo intima. And intima, remember, is the acellular and so and so forth. Uh, so totally different and basically that's, that's the muscle is so the of the vessel and that is what leads to the normal visual motion at follow up and this actually has been shown by many studies that uh, the patients who got the BVS stent uh, that vessel became pulsatile and has a normal visual motion uh, compared to a, compared to our metal stent and of course uh, the while the stent struts remain in the metal on the right side on the left side you can see that after follow up uh, this is the big experiment that is tends to disappear. Now, other issue is that so that now, so there is no longer neo intima. So now it is basically your cap is uh, made of neo uh, media. So there is less chance of having a event at the follow up. So there is more better plaque stability. Other thing which is noted now with the newer stent absorb design that the vessel enlarges. So the lumen gain occurs after six months, twelve months. So you say, well, maybe it is just because of the structure loss of the mat of the stent scaffold. No, it is actually more than that. That the vessel positively remodeled. So another advantage which has been seen uh, by the absorb uh, cohort uh, trial uh, follow up IVAS and OCT that there is a lumen gain in the newer stent uh, scaffold design compared to the old one and this has been shown by the IVAS analysis and this has showed uh, that uh, really the vasodilatation occur uh, in these vessels. So this uh, having said that now we actually come to the real life data. The absorb extent which was supposed to be 1000 I think it stopped after 800 cases and they presented some data of the about 500 patients showing very good efficacy. This is again the old data uh, which is uh, now they actually have pooled analysis of the absorbed BVS with the Zions uh, from the Zions studies and seems to be both are functioning equally well in the propensity adjusted outcomes but not head to head comparison which uh, I am going to show. Now, then there are few data now, data set, which have come in last six months. The first of its kind was in the Ghost EU registry that basically that from European multi-center studies and uh, uh, the in uh, 1189 patients in all comers, 1731 BVS were uh, uh, the deployed and these are the 30 day and six months outcome. Seems to be okay. Uh, you, that's what you will expect if you take all patients with acute coronary syndrome, which were about 30 to 40 percent in this group. What really was a little outlier, in my opinion, was uh, stent thrombosis, 1.5 uh, at six months and 2.1 with the, um, I mean, 30 days and 2.1 at six months, which translated into about 3 percent at one year. We also know that current DES, particularly Zions, has a stent thrombosis of less than 1 percent or 0.5 percent at one year. And these are the timing of uh, stent thrombosis. Some of them early, some occurs late. So clearly, there has been an issue in this ghost EU registry of uh, Europe. And there are few important points. And there's what we learned when we use some new technique. That is, what we learned here, that in this study, the procedural data were that post dilatation was done only in half of the cases. And I was OCT was used in about a quarter. But most important is the post dilatation done in less than 50%. Then we have a, a comparative data of the complex cases, uh, all comers with the absorbed uh, BVS 
compared to ever liver saluting stent by Colombo and this actually is the real life cases and those are that patients with the BVS were compared against the EES and of course you see much high pressure post dilatation and uh, what we usually do when we deploy the stent more uh, pre-treatment and all cases uh, having a post dilatation and showed the similar outcome as shown here rather numerically lower event rate at BVS compared to EES. You say well how can that be happen? In the ghost EU different data uh, this comparative real world patients are different I think is all because of the technique that you need to post dilate and I'll come back to that. Now then the major study was presented absorbed two trial on Sunday in TCT and that basically two to one randomization of uh, at of absorb versus Zions of 12 month data were presented at the 46 site of 500 patients. Uh, this was the flow um, and follow up of these cases and basically showed that as you see that in absorb uh, group they have an, the, uh, the balloon used and the diameter of the balloon was smaller and the lower pressure compared to the Zions. So this is because that's the way it was taught that you should go a smaller balloon and low pressure when you're using absorb versus uh, using the Zions. And this actually led to the lower MLD, uh, both by angiogram as well as by IVUS and lower acute gain uh, in the absorb group compared to the Zions group. So clearly that largely because of the lower balloon size and lower inflation pressure. And these are the clinical outcomes as shown here. You can see that the TLR 4.8 versus 3, uh, no difference, uh, of course, target vessel MI, the small group, these were counted as the two CKMB more than two times was uh, higher in the absorb group compared to Zions. Revascularization overall actually was a little more, a little surprising that while TLR was lower uh, in the Zions group, uh, but uh, clearly the revascularization point of view was higher. Uh, at follow up, so that just need to be a little discrepancy, I need to uh, learn a little more of the data presented, but important point in this study is that they did know slightly higher target vessel MI and, uh, and more importantly which we are waiting for is the stent thrombosis or scaffold thrombosis and that you can see in the Zions there is zero and it's about the one percent in the absorber at various time frame uh, in these cases and of course uh, as I mentioned the CK uh, MB were, was 3.9 uh, per protocol in the BVS versus 1.2 in the Zions and largely it's all the because of they said with the, some of the technique issues. Then what we found at the follow-up that better exercise tolerance, lower use of uh, anti-anginal medications in the uh, absorb group and less angina. You can see this slide showing that uh, less angina 16% versus 25.6% in the Zions. So clearly there is less angina or recurrent angina in the uh, and your group, maybe because we didn't go very high pressure, and this will be published in length, so I could not access it to get a little more data on it. But overall, it seems to be that despite our early preliminary technique that uh, absorb stent BVS did okay, uh, except that maybe some of the issues, and which is what I have highlighted here, that full lesion preparation with pre-dilatation to achieve a residual stenosis of less than 30% prior to advancing a scaffold, even if this requires scoring or cutting balloon or rotablation for calcific lesion. So the lesion preparation is a must when you are using a BVS. Second, careful sizing of the scaffold to allow for the limited expansion limit beyond nominal diameter. So if your vessel is 3, go with the 3, don't go with the 2.5. Lastly, essential routine post dilatation with high pressure, go up to 20 atmosphere. Do not worry about uh, breaking the integrity of the uh, scaffold. So that is what the concern in the beginning was. But with these optimal technique, I think those are the ones used, uh, deployed in the Colombo's experience. That's why the data were much different than what we noted. And that probably will translate into a better outcome and more importantly, no stent thrombosis. And of course, uh, now the next generation BVS will have a thinner uh, scaffold uh, uh, thickness of less than 100 micron. Then of course the data will be absorbed three trials of 2000 plus patients has been completed, likely to be presented next year in European society or, um, or TCT, uh, absorbed four. Uh, basically is for the vasodilatation point of view and angina point of view as a primary endpoint and then many other studies are ongoing which will really tell us where is the BVS going to settle in our therapeutic armamentarium uh, and uh, therefore we just need to know 
uh, that absorb BVS has a reasonable data comparable with the our excellent bare mat, uh, the drug looting stent, but the technique is very important to get the best outcome in these cases. Now, while we are talking about the bioresorbable stent, there is a whole field of the bioresorbable polymer, uh, which is seems to be associated with the lower late stent thrombosis uh, is evolving and that actually with the new day, new uh, stent design of synergy and so we'll need to know uh, where this field of the bioresorbable polymer versus bioresorbable uh, scaffolder stent will settle in. But quickly the second update in CTO recanalization as I mentioned the success rate continues to increase. Expert CTO which was presented by Anu in the ACC uh, of a 200 plus cases showed the wire success of 89.9 percent, procedural success of 96.6 percent. So these are the current data in United States, no longer Japan. These are the data we have. 90 percent success of the CTO in United States with associated very low complication rate as you can see here uh, of the TLR of only 6 percent. So extremely, extremely reassuring that a CTO intervention does well. Now then there are few two uh, basically the data at present uh, on the latest data on the CTO. One is again from the UK from the database and basically is that if you this is a large database of uh, uh, the uh, 14,000 patients showed that if you have a CTO PCI success of at least one vessel, you improve the outcome mortality compared to if you are unsuccessful. The successful ha happened in 71% of cases uh, compared to failed in about one third and clearly that successful CTO improves your long term survival which have been shown by earlier data and now with the large registry data confirms that. More importantly, what they found uh, within there that of the success, if you have partial success versus full success means you have done a complete revascularization or you are done a partial revascularization, there is still one vessel still remain more than 50% stenosis, maybe CTO also. That seems to be your complete revascularization has a great outcome or better outcome compared to partial, although the difference is less compared to uh, failed revascularization. So idea should be that you need to open at least one CTO to improve patient's outcome on long term. In this study, uh, in this large study, there was no difference in individual vessel revascularization, whether it's a LED, RC or circumflex. Remember earlier data from Mayo Clinic showed that LED CTO revascularization improves survival, but not a non-LED did not. But here in this study, there was no difference and so. So then there are uh, sub, and the data presented with the CTO IVAS guided randomized trial uh, from Japan. 400 patients, IVAS guided CTO recanalization versus angiographic guided. All these patients first had the wire into the distal vessel and then did the IVAS or angiographic guided. Now, it's not that the IVAS decided you to do the PCI. Wire has gone into the distal vessel and then we are randomized to IVAS guided versus angiographic guided. And basically, that IVAS guided group had a higher uh, post dilatation pressure uh, and uh, uh, post dilatation use and uh, overall the better lumen. Uh, because of post dilatation, my opinion, and overall angiographic guided versus IVAS guided, you can see here death and MI was lower in the IVAS guided, and the TVR was uh, trended towards lower in the uh, IVAS guided group. More importantly, because of uh, various regions, there were a lot of crossover of 17% of cases. If you take per protocol, there was a clear difference of the MACE. 8.4% in the angiographic guided, again it's a randomized trial uh, versus 2.2 in the IVAS guided. So really, it seems to be that once your wire has been distal, uh, has recanalized, that IVAS does help in a randomized fashion. Uh, we have presented in this setup uh, many other randomized trials of the DES with the IVAS guidance. So far, there has been a no clear benefit. One registry data of the left main from Park did show that IVAS guidance have a better um, lower mortality compared to angiographic guidance in the left main case, but this will be the first study of its kind showing positive result of uh, the per protocol I was guided versus angiographic guided. So there are many other randomized trials are coming for the CTO and the whole question comes is that if you have a CTO, we know that if you succeed, you do better, but if you fail, you do worse. But the question is, what if you don't do anything? And this is where these two trials, Euros uh, CTO and Decision CTO with a little different in, their, in terms of their uh, endpoints is going to answer that question. You have a CTO, should you open it 
or you should just manage them medically. And the explore uh, the CTO trial is for patients with the STEMI or non-STEMI who have a totally occluded vessel. Should you open non-infarct related artery or just leave it alone? So these really will tell us uh, in the near future that where we will be. Now this is just the last data on the retrograde recanalization, uh, just to show that uh, there seems to be date, uh, enough evidence accruing that retrograde uh, recanalization is associated with higher dye use, contrast use, and higher complication, higher stent use, so that clearly that if next uh, you try not to do uh, the, or first uh, you try the anti-grade before going to the retrograde. And with that note, I'll stop here and uh, Anu is ready to uh, recanalize this uh, vessel and try with the integrate first. I mean, excellent review. I can see you've been busy preparing these slides after the presentation only yes. less than 48 hours ago. <laughs> yes. Uh, there, I have a few follow-up questions, but uh, let's see first of all how the case yeah. is proceeding. Anu, tell us now what's the plan, what wire and what you're using. So we, I have a fielder and fine cross. Uh, I think if you see here, Anu, you don't have a tape. I mean, CTO just stops there abrupt and then it's not tapered with a side branch right at that uh, level. I think we try same with the fielder first, see if the fielder will help us to find a channel. This is a case where you can go with a fielder or a um, fielder X in the sense, go with your any workhorse wire till you reach the CTO and uh, not a bad choice that you take fielder XT to find if there is any micro channel. I know all the tips and tricks you are teaching here uh, were used in the expert CTO trial? Yes. We actually, um, I mean our center and one other center actually did, uh, we were the first one to complete the 50 enrollment. I mean FTA allowed only 50 cases per site. We could have done more, but uh, they limited us. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, this is the whole concept of the micro channels. Uh, that uh, micro channel that using the fielder XT with the 0 0.0. Um, I mean, the tip is tapered, which goes up to 0 0.009 with the fielder XT, but uh, you can always try with regular fielder first. Go with your work. I'm getting the. Okay, let's see. So give me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one right now we give anti gray. No, it's in oh, the side branch. In yeah. the side branch. And this is actually very interesting. In this young person, there was no clinical event. And he just has a new onset of class 2 angina and looks like a short. CTO and this actually better than what it was before and it is not uncommon that once you do your other vessels uh, and uh, that give antiplatelet therapy then those patients uh, actually the vessel uh, may develop some integrate channel or may the, the shorter duration of uh, occlusion. Remember there is a trial going on called CTO1, CTO2 using collagen, collagen age infusion. That is you are unsuccessful initially then you give collagen is overnight and then you actually have 75 percent success rate of your failed CTO. So therefore there is a some concept by giving uh, the collagen or in my opinion simply that those are on the double antiplatelet therapy uh, those patients just do well because they start uh, dissolving some of that uh, uh, your um, uh, the thrombus. I know you made it look very simple. Yeah. Yeah. It actually became simple. Yeah, I look, uh, th there's a lot more technique, I think, which goes into it. Uh, uh, probably so much of this is because of the exactly the right uh, choice of the support catheter, no? That yeah, support, yeah, support catheter and I think uh, and the wire. Right. It's, it all depends. The same thing is uh, what wire you want to select and that's why we always give a choice. It's not that and uh, what... Uh, no, I could, I could, I could observe a very deft handling of the support catheter and the wire. Uh, uh, exceptional job. Twenty high pressure. So, are you going to use the same wire or switch it for? No, no, we are just going to use a three hundred wire now because since Excellent. the transit yeah. catheter crossed. So, right. if the question is same, if the fine cross or you had over the wire balloon that did not cross, then you need to take that out and probably try with the smaller. Uh, 
a balloon which is uh, 1.2 is the smallest balloon and these were right. the balloons that were also tried in expert CTO was uh, the mini trek uh, balloon. So exactly the same strategies which you have employed in the trial. Yeah. Samin, a couple of follow-up yep. questions. Uh, where do you think uh, are we going to be using the BVS for every patient? Uh, well, I would say that what we learned, and actually it's a very interesting, till we get a little more better data, that after this uh, BVS data were presented, actually I got a call or SMS from a few people. Some said that, yes, if they have a lesion uh, in their vessel, they still go with the Zion, or uh, some said, well, we'll go with the BVS because of less angina. I think basically if I had to take... Uh, the understand and I extrapolate and I in terms of uh, recommendation I would say the proximal vessel segments uh, probably will do better uh, with the B BVS so far. yeah the BVS uh, they will do better with the BVS uh, and uh, and particularly the young age because that whole advantage of the BVS really comes after three four plus years so that uh, maybe in a younger age group and uh, uh, that even let's say the uh, or absorb three trial becomes uh, you know positive and FDA approves it decision will be that which case you use because probably everybody will ask for the BV assistant but we know some cases will be a difficult delivery and uh, may create even more problem so that uh, we'll continue to use a uh, metal stand so but the way the data continues and if we can take care of the stent the scaffold thrombosis i can tell you that yes uh, bvs may take dominate the market of 60 plus percent cases may not be all but about 60 percent i i spent uh, yesterday evening uh, uh, a few minutes uh, conversing with uh, dr chuck simonton who i think uh, deserves a lot of credit uh, how these uh, trials have been done uh, he was uh, even speculating and we were discussing about the possibility of using a bvs platform in acs and even STEMI. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because many of them uh, in uh, the ghost EU trials were uh, non-STEMI. I don't know whether they were truly STEMI cases, but they were not uh, acute coronary syndrome. Uh, and particularly at the follow-up, uh, you mean after 50 cases and so. So therefore, the event rate actually increased after the 50 cases. You know, you'll say that maybe event rate should be lower uh, by experience. No, but if your patient populations become different, then your event rate, that your event rate uh, actually became higher. Uh, after the f initial cases and largely because of the complexity of the cases we start using uh, and that's the same thing that uh, when uh, the DES uh, you know cipher came people were using for all uh, uh, bifurcation lesions and uh, uh, and of course uh, we started having events uh, and so on and so forth and acute MI and so so those things are also very important that your careful case selection till we understand a little more and actually I have personally used in STEMI patients uh, in India BVS uh, and uh, no here, this, yeah. Let's take a picture now. We have done a 2.520. Looks very nice already. Yeah. Uh, Samin, uh, technically, of course, uh, it looks, uh, it appears from the data and from some of your observations that it is really the key is vessel preparation before you deploy a, D a BVS, no? Absolutely, yeah, that's the key here and post dilate every case. No, no, no. Right. But post dilate, uh, there is a little disparity yeah. between. Uh, 3 5, 3 0. Oh. Distal three. is 3 0. Oh. Yeah. yeah, post dilate and go to same 20 atmosphere. Right. Yes, sir, okay. three yeah. or in the beginning, remember when this and started? That's, that's what you think was the mistake made mistake. in the ghost or the ghost. Video. Exactly. Okay. And because post dilated only in half, and 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 part of that was that when BVS started, you know, India was one of the part in uh, uh, in December of 2012, uh, and so when they started, it was taught that go to a once you post dilate, go to a quarter size lower, don't go beyond 15 atmosphere, and so so those all were the wrong things. And that's why we encountered some stent thrombosis in India. But then now with the technique change, all those have um, disappeared. So very important, the technique issue. So clearly you need to uh, do a lesion preparation better. That's one. And the secondly, uh, people ask that, do you need to do IVAS in every case? I would say no, as long as you have gone with a post dilatation. And that is the key. You have gone with the one to one size post dilatation. That's perfectly fine. Uh, and uh, in these cases. Now then question also comes that can you go through the stent struts of the uh, scaffold uh, struts uh, of the BVS. Well I can personally have done uh, you uh, going with a 1.520 balloon uh, through the scaffold struts. Go distal, distal fast, little yeah, bit more. Good, yeah, good. Huh? Okay. Yeah I thought you'll take it down to yeah. the bifurcation. Yeah. Uh, Samin, I... Yeah. Huh? 
full metal jacket here. Yeah? No, but this still, you want to take a picture? Take a better picture again. No, because this still, I think the bifurcation, you have to go up to the bifurcation, right. there is a lesion there. You may need two stents, but one has to be just before the bifurcation. Don't have to overlap, but three, four millimeter. Even by collateral, it stops there. If you go back to the earlier pictures. So regarding uh, the best optimal uh, imaging modality for BVS, uh, do you think there would be any role of uh, OCT yeah. or uh, all IVUS based? No, I think, uh, no, I mean again. Or neither? The, yeah, no, I think uh, the best for BVS particularly will be OCT. Right. But what we need to learn, uh, how the stents are disintegrating, where it is and so, the OCT will give you better information Someday. than that. Yeah, therefore, clearly that only one area I would say, uh, one stand design where you'll b favor OCT or IVAS will be the BVS. Go on. Duration of uh, dual oh. antiplatelet therapy? Yeah, the, I think uh, the, the so far, uh, I don't think we should change it. Reason is because we still have to overcome this issue uh, of uh, 12, 14 atmosphere. The issue of uh, uh, higher scaffold thrombosis in the randomized trial. So no. therefore, uh, till we answer that question, I don't think we should actually, one of the cases uh, which happened in the GHOST EU, the patient stopped antiplatelet therapy after uh, whatever, nine months or so. So clearly, that I think we still need to continue uh, as planned. Uh, our uh, adapt for, uh, you know, whatever our technique would be, that whether you are going to do it uh, six months uh, uh, or one year, uh, but clearly we continue same. Uh, but I, you know, so far we are still giving for one year. Uh, once we change to six months, probably we can do six months uh, uh, in the future with the BVS. Looks like you need another stent there uh, across the bifurcation or uh, no, planning to leave it alone? That can be taken care of. That may be just a little plaque yeah. shift and uh, dilatation. But what about you definitely need approximately? Huh? Could I take another day? Because I'm planning yeah. to stand there. Yeah, but you want to approximately? Yeah, give us a what size you need? Eight. And Anu Eight? clearly, clearly no osteal lesion. That was all spasm. Yeah. 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 Take a sixteen. Take a mild narrowing. You want to make it a sixteen? Where, what we where do, do you want to stop? Just at the little bump at three o'clock. I mean no. at nine o'clock. At night. See? Okay. That's just nine o'clock. Yeah. Seven Not three five. Three o. Three o. Three o sixteen will be good. Now what question is the what we do distally? Nothing. No, but that's the question. Uh, uh, no, I think uh, just vasodilators will take care of it. Let's okay. get a little bit up. It was there. So, Samin, Samin, fast forward this case three years, 42 year old male, would you use a BVS in a this case? Absolutely. This will be the ideal case. Yes. Okay. And particularly the lesion subsets with the, which are higher uh, risk for uh, the, the re stenosis and future event. Uh, long lesion, CTO, uh, in this particular case, yes. So that is what I would suggest that this will be the uh, ideal case uh, for the uh, for uh, BVS. What do you think will be the anticoagulant strategy for uh, deploying BVS? Well, I mean, I think it's still the same uh, the way we are doing by valerudin. By valerudin, yes. Uh, and of those who are b believer in heparin, they can just do it with heparin. Uh, but uh, but definitely antiplatelet therapy. I will still say that uh, we still need to it's prove that guy? concept. Okay. Huh? So you ended up using a longer one than the eight, huh? No, so yeah. fifteen. We just wanted to. There is a mild narrowing proximally, so I suggested right uh, to go with the sixteen. Okay. Because these are the Promus Premier. Go up. Yeah. So, Samin, this uh, uh, this week okay. has been uh, what so huge running back and forth for you to TCT. Ah uh, well, uh, <laughs> as usual, oh, make it a couple of trips, um, and so the I was there on Saturday and uh, uh, the brief time periods, and uh, having a Washington uh, DC is, uh, makes it easier. Yes, rather than, than to San, Francisco uh, San Francisco or Miami. Right. <laughs> Okay, Anu, you are quite confident that uh, distal uh, vasodilatation should take care of it all? Yeah. All right.
to our uh, viewers, uh, continue to enjoy the companion uh, peripheral uh, interventions uh, site and of course all this uh, video will be posted uh, very shortly on the cccliveCases.org. And particularly what uh, you have made the index and we are going to some, because that lot of people have asked yes, me that, yes. uh, that you know rather than going through the individual, uh, the whole library, they want to be very selective so that uh, I received of yours. Uh, I'm going to just look into it once again, maybe add one or two special features Right. Uh, that those are the cases they should be able to just go directly into it. Yes, I think that can be very valuable for the viewers and uh, yeah. right. little concern still at that bifurcation see, site. Yeah. But it, I mean, it could be just a step up, a step down. But I, I think, think it's just a step something. up, step down. No, but this, uh, uh, and geographically, we had Pro to be concerned. Probably an AP cranial uh, view, a little bit open that further, but... Uh, no, but I, you know, I personally do a, a with kind of distal, you know, I call it a massage. No, I right. think three or stand was bulb. too big because I was not okay. planning to go that distal. I would have put one stand just where the CTO was and would have come no, out. No, but I know, but remember the Then you evaluate later, if you needed, you could have gone over with a smaller stand. But I the goal also has to be once you open the CTO, it does not mean you have to do a full metal jacket. Right. Yeah, but what if I'm just saying that balloon and put a 2.5 balloon for uh, 12? Just for a few minutes, a uh, few seconds, and just. Uh, but what yeah. what would you have against putting in a yeah. two seven five by sixteen uh, stent across the? I think uh, I, the goal should not be to do a full metal jacket. Or once you open the CTO, if you go there, if you truly look at it, the vessel, the CTO was hardly a, yeah. not even twenty millimeter stent. Now we are doing long a, stents, right. more but, than forty millimeter stent there. Yeah, but but it was a long legion. No. Because remember, most of the CTO legion lengths are about um, 38, uh, 39 millimeters and so. You defeat the purpose, I think, if you are doing a full metal jacket. You take care of the lesion, which is a CTO, and then you give vasodilation, and then if you need it, you could have just later on done a balloon. If needed, then only you step. A little balloon. We are 2.5, uh, 12 compliant balloon. Yeah. So, Samin, the, how do you balance now with the, I kind of got a gist of your uh, your thoughts on this that uh, go anti-grade, another anti-grade before you go retrograde, but some of the data from uh, the complication rates uh, from uh, the retrograde uh, does uh, bring some concerns to the this thought, no? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's, what is this now? I mean, go with the safer strategy and give it a second shot. Exactly, exactly, yes. Um, and uh, the, the whole, uh, you know, the concept, a uh, lot of people go integrate uh, uh, dissection also, and I, I tell them that avoid that too, because we still have to uh, prove that integrate uh, re-entry, uh, the star techniques and so that they are uh, okay. Um, the mini star and last, uh, that, um, uh, that basically, uh, not associated with higher uh, thrombosis and so, uh, and restenosis. So the, all those things need to be uh, looked into it in a very positive, uh, the prospective data. Because I know that uh, many people are not concerned about uh, having a subintimal integrate dissection. Uh, but I, I definitely is concerned about the subintimal dissection integrate because you know that uh, by the, by doing subintimal, you are going to create more inflammation. Uh, secondly, you are going to clip some of the side branches. And uh, the earlier data do are associated, shows that there may be a higher uh, total reocclusion. And of course, uh, you know, once you have a little bit issue in terms of the flow, you will have a higher uh, the restenosis as well as reocclusion. So right. therefore, uh, the, uh, both retrograde as well as integrate subintimal dissection. I'm still cautious about till we know uh, clearly uh, in this data in an integrate fashion. This is a what, 2.512? Yeah. Samin, what has been your... Uh, Feedback from uh, audience from uh, your uh, live cases uh, are a lot of excitement towards watching uh, 
uh, structural heart disease on life? Well, I mean, this is just uh, we are making the announcement now, um, and uh, the I am sure with this, everybody wants to do a structural heart disease at present, all right. the fellows and so and so forth. And I kept telling them that you may do a structural heart, but your bread and butter still will be coronary. But there's a lot of excitement about the structural heart disease and uh, which will be only seen once we do our one first case. Because live case itself has a totally different meaning than doing any taped case or so. Actually, 3O became like too big. This was only, I didn't even, went to 16 atmosphere. That's our usual deployment, stand deployment pressure. You want to leave it it's now? too big, yeah. Yeah. Distal vessel was just 275. Yeah, but I think it looks better than before. Does not seem to be any dissection. Uh, in my opinion, that this now can be left alone. What do you think? Uh, mixed okay. feelings, not sure, but uh, I, I have no, no, no problem with your uh, strategy. What Anu has uh, stated also makes a lot of sense that uh, uh, some of the gains which you accrue by doing a CTO, you lose by putting too many stents, but... I, I would be tempted to put uh, one more uh, 275 or something there, but look. Uh, one of the concern is putting another one you feel uh, no, yeah. that will compromise the AV continuation? Absolutely, yeah. But there is no, uh, no disease at the ostium of the AV continuation. I think it's just a step down. All right. You want to leave it this way? There is a mild disease approximately also, I mean, this right, is, right. you can decide in the future too, I mean, uh, but again, many of uh, us will put another stand there across and uh, take care of it because yes, uh, unless you do a IVAS and have shown that yes, there is no dissection and your lumen is still okay. This is a big step down, yeah. 3O was a big, uh, I think, uh, too big a stand for that vessel. Okay, now we are at the decision point. Uh, I will put it to some. It's your time. patient. You tell us uh, what to do. You have the wire ready. But I would not have gone. Yeah. Three or thirty-two. That. Give me. Hmm? Yeah. One of the reasons, Anu, I would favor putting a stent is, uh, you know, now that we've dilated with the balloon, we might as well. Uh, but on the other hand, one could argue that uh, we are just uh, doing it to make a vessel look pretty. Yeah. Yeah. That actually, you know, uh, that uh, that every uh, balloon dilatation. But if you have done a very low pressure, right, yeah. and which I do very commonly, right, I and don't uh, uh, feel that I am obliged to you, put a. You are just yeah. uh, increasing the distal flow. Yeah. That's all. And then when you know, remember all these lesions, when you put a stent, there is a vertical displacement of the plaque. Right. So that looks like. So what what you are doing with the low pressure is just uh, tacking that up. I think we should take two seven five or two point five. 2.5. 2.512 or 16. Let's decide one second. I think 12 will be okay. Across, yeah. 12. Okay. 2.512. So that may help in uh, matching that uh, disparity also, and if required, we do a post dilatation there. Another uh, very gratifying uh, feature at uh, the TCT was uh, meeting uh, so many physicians who have been watching the cases and uh, uh, many of them gave some useful tips. Yes. And, and one of the commonest was, of course, as you have mentioned, they, they would like to have a directory so that yes. uh, they can reference for uh, follow up these cases. Yeah. Now, this has been a very gratifying. So many people come, approach you and tell us 
uh, that how the you know great job we are doing, and it actually seems to be when I talk to them that you know do you watch well, alone? Well, so so many of oh, them. Oh no no, the fellows yeah, are there. Yeah, they, exactly. They are using it as a teaching part of their uh, programs, and uh, 14, I actually had two physicians yeah, come to yeah. me from Myanmar. Yeah. So it's uh, the reach of the web. Yes. 16. I have no doubt angiographically it is going to look Somewhere. gorgeous, but let's see what happens to the uh, probably the side branch. Ridiculous. Need a fielder? Such a simple case. You made it complete. Yes. That always is the issue that even if there is no side branch yeah. uh, osteal disease, well, like in this particular case. Let's start giving little verapamil C because many of them side branch. It started occlusion. coming back. It started coming back it already. The plaque shift and yeah. so you can always do a. Uh, I call it a liquid liquid stent by giving Don't maybe two B three A and so. And every trial of the two B three A did show that you are associated with a lower uh, um, side branch occlusion. So many times in these cases when you plan not to because the same you want to go through the stent struts you will distort it that area where you do a dilatation through the stent starts comes back with re stenosis so if you can get away you are all largely this is the plaque shift and little thrombus which will clean out by itself yeah the vessel has started coming yeah. back quite well and probably even removing the guide wire will further increase yeah. the it's there you back. go it's almost back it's yeah back. yeah Anu, final thoughts. Uh, what were uh, some of the 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 okay. procedural aspects which made the the procedure successful? I think uh, the wire selection, which probably, if not a fielder would not, the next would have been uh, miracle six. And then the you know the length of the stent. I think that's also very important in the CTO. The CTO trial. We did have the what length of the first you got to decide what your CTO length is based on your uh, dual injection and then you decide on the final uh, stent length like uh, we showed in this case no point opening a CTO and do a full metal jacket of the entire vessel which is uh, the key here so if you have a see we could have probably could have come with the 138 stent just where the total CTO uh, right. oh, for the vessel was. But other than uh, that, I, uh, the other th th thing was that if you have uh, crossed the CTO, then you are able to get the transit catheter across the CTO. I think you can then decide what should be a balloon size. We should be, uh, you can go now with a 2.5 balloon rather than just go with the otherwise smaller balloon and then escalate the balloon. If, uh, if the transit catheter has not crossed the CTO, then you go with the um, you know, smaller balloon, which is the lush, uh, which you have 1.2 balloon that comes up to 6 millimeter, 1.26 millimeter, 8 millimeter, 12 millimeter, or you have 1.5, which comes at uh, 9 or uh, a 12 millimeter. So probably you could, st if, you, if the transit catheter does not cross, you can take the 1.2 balloon uh, with the shortest, um, you know, length, whatever is available, and uh, just uh, escalate uh, the, um, hence both. But that is, this is a key decision there that what should be a balloon size. So once you are done a pre-dilation and you know your pre-dilation is good, again, if there is calcium, you may have to go uh, another um, non-compliant balloon and uh, pre-dilate. Otherwise, if, you, if it looks that you have been able to deliver the balloon and dilate it, you can just stent and come out. Means just, just key few steps uh, is that um, if the transit catheter cause, crosses, go with the 2.5 balloon, pre-dilate, strength, and come out, and that, that could make your CTO also very short with the de uh, decreased amount of radiation as well as uh, less dye. And, and uh, but I just want to add one very important feature, uh, point on that, that if you have used a stiffer wire, not like the fielder we had, if you use a stiffer wire, your next step should be the change that wire to a less a, you know, a traumatic wire of your work horse, whether you it require that you may just uh, do what we did, grand slam, or you use a wire, uh, the go through the your fine cross and uh, you pull back into the guide catheter, trap it, but change the wire uh, because that 
I have seen many cases that your excellent results of your CTO, but then you have a small wire perforation in the branch because you still did most of the work with the stiff wire and particularly when you are putting a stent. Back and forth, wire goes distally and creates those uh, micro wire perforations. Excellent uh, point, uh, Anu. Valuable tips, uh, beautiful case, uh, solid, solid technique. Uh, Samin, Good just slide. as uh, another closing point, a lot of uh, encouraging uh, trials uh, showing uh, the benefits of uh, closure devices. Uh, you are closing most of your groins? Right. That we have been doing it for a long time. We actually have more complications here, manual compression and closure. Yeah. So the, I have a very, very low threshold of uh, uh, the, using the closure device even if there is some disease. Knowing that we have a lot of devices, angio seal, perclose and minx, uh, the, so the 95, 96% of cases, if not um, for higher up, uh, are used closure and uh, Mount Sinai cath lab. And between the three devices you mentioned, what uh, do you use the most? I think these fellows like uh, seal the Angel most, seal. right? Okay, easy so to Angel use. Seal probably is about 60%, uh, the per close about 30% and 8-10% uh, will be the uh, our minx. Wonderful. Uh, final tips from Good. you, Samin? Let's get to the slides uh, so that we complete in time. We started a few minutes late when we are finishing in 60 minutes time window. Uh, therefore, just uh, take home messages. Uh, the PCI trials involving BVS, even in early stages, has shown promise of excellent efficacy, safety, plaque regression, lumen enlargement, and restoration of wage of motion. Optimal BVS implantation techniques should be used to achieve optimal results. That's the key, in my opinion. Second, the recent trials of CTO PCI has shown very high wire as well as procedural success with very low complication rates. Our guidance may help to enhance acute results and procedural safety. Successful recanalization of one or more CTO is associated with improved long-term survival. So to try to, the goal should be not to just do the CTO, but succeed in opening the CTO. Now three quick questions that following are the two statements regarding absorbed two trial data. BVS is superior to DES in efficacy. BVS is associated with numerically higher stent thrombosis versus DES. BVS is associated with higher large MIs versus DES. BVS is associated with higher TVR versus DES. And lastly, BVS is associated with lower death rate versus DES. Second question, uh, and of course I have covered that in my presentation, which is also the same. Following are the true statements regarding BVS implantation technique. We, and we have clearly highlighted that the BVS can be deployed without post dilatation. BVS cannot be deployed after rotational threctomy. BVS should not be post dilated for 15 atmosphere. BVS size should be 0.5, uh, quarter to uh, half size less than the vessel size, millimeter uh, than the vessel size and none of the above. And lastly, that I was CTO trial, I was used was associated with lower thrombosis, lower death and MI, lower dissection, lower CVA, and lesser stent use. So I think uh, these are all very simple salient points uh, uh, should be uh, clear uh, with, the, with the didactic discussion we had. Samin, excellent job. Congratulations uh, to the staff uh, that assisted you. Uh, we are going to close uh, this present webcast and see you during case number 64 on October 21st.